Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and today we're going to talk about XML. Uh, one of the beauties of XML, and I'm going to show you some examples of XML, is the ability to write essentially your own language, which is a data descriptive language. For those people who've had courses in databases, the ability to design hierarchical tables and store data in that tables is a very powerful thing. Uh, XML allows you to do, do the same thing, but it really allows you to do this in a text format. So let's look over here at some XML here. What I've got here is a CD catalog. Okay, I've created this XML. It's uh, also very similar. It's actually taken right off an XML that's at W3 Schools. I only have added a few extra uh, elements to it. Um, here I've got this catalog, and this is, if you look at it, it looks just like an HTML tag. I've defined this as an XML using version one of XML, so this is an XML document. Uh, the other thing that defines it as an XML document is the fact that it has a .xml extension. So inside of this catalog, I now have, um, and you notice that this is a, a tree structure, I have this tag that says CD. And inside this tag that says CD, I have a title, artist, country, company, price, year. I could add other um, elements to this, but these are just the elements I have right now. And within the open CD tag and the closed CD tag, I have the same elements each time around. So title, artist, country, company, price, and year. The same set of uh, tags that are child tags for each individual CD. So I've kept track. In this case, I've got four CDs um, that are in my catalog. This is called the root catalog. It's the root element. And then each of these is child, each of these CD tags is children of those root elements, which in turn have their own children. But it's really easy to see how this is nice, simple, structured data. Because inside of here, you've got the data that goes with this. Okay, so, but the tag title, artist, country, company, price, and year, those aren't HTML tags. Those are tags that we made up to define this data. So now, this is now saved as a, as a file. And I call this CD catalog. And it's saved with a .xml extension. So now I'm going to move it out of the way. Okay. Now, I'm going to now go to this next one here, which says My CD Collection. This, by the way, is a view, a specific view, uh, using a browser, I'm using Firefox here, of the data, which is over here. Okay. Now, in this specific case, you'll notice that I'm not displaying all of the data. I'm only spe displaying specific fields of the data that um, are right here, that uh, I've selected to display. Okay, well, let's figure out how we do that. And the way that we did that is we applied what's called an extensible style sheet language or an XSL file to the XML file. So let's look at that file here. So I'm going to bring this file over here. And um, I, if you look at this, this has a .xsl extension. Okay, it uses the same XML version as the XML. Uh, I've defined this now XSL style sheet version one. This is a namespace, XML namespace. So anytime that I use the term XSL, I'm actually talking about XSL tags. Okay, so if you see a tag that starts with XSL colon, that tag is a specific XSL tag. Okay, that defines the namespace XSL so that I don't have collisions between XSL tags and HTML tags because I'm going to embed HTML tags into this XSL document. So here's what I do. Okay, I've created this template here and what I want to do is I notice I have an HTML, I have a body and in that body I have a header which is by the way was on the sheet. I have a table. In the table I have a table row which has header fields but now let's get in down to the part where the XSL is unique. I have this XSL tag called for each. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to loop. And I specifically want to select within the catalog tag, within the CD tag, the fields within the CD tags. Let's go back over to my XML and look and see how that works. You notice I have the root catalog, I have the child element CD, and then I have these other tags. The select allows me to select within catalog and CD. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to display the value of specific named XML 
elements within that XML document. And it allows me to do it in a for each. And if you're used to the concept of for each, what you're saying is that you're going to loop through every single one of those CDs within the catalog and pull out the title, artist, and year and display it inside this table format. Now, this is just part of the XSL language. The XSL language itself allows you to do a lot of different things like sort, show specific ones that you, you match by uh, a query, different things that you can do there. And I just want you to see and understand a basic conceptual structure of how XML, which holds the data right there, XSL, which defines the visual presentation of the data, can work together. Okay, so within this, I have defined this visual presentation using the XSL language. So I have this XSL style sheet which does that. And I've only demonstrated one basic looping tag of the for each with the select of those catalogs and CDs and those specific titles. Now, XSL has a lot more capability than just simply doing that in the display. Once you get a basic concept of the structure of XSL, the W3 Schools site has a very good set of tutorials that go over each of the things that XSL can do. And they're, they're, they're not this huge, massive list of things. They're all very basic things in the way that you display data. Well, now, I need to put this all together because if you look at this document here, this is actually an HTML document that takes the XSL and it applies it to the XML. And the way that I did that is, I have it right here, is I did that by using JavaScript. And I'm going to go through a cup, and this is, this is a JavaScript. This is pulled directly off of the W3 School site. And it looks like a fairly complex JavaScript. By the way, it's not exactly from the W3 School site because I did make modifications to the JavaScript. But they're fairly basic modifications. So I'm going to come right down here where you can see the um, HTML piece of this HTML. Okay, I'm going to go back to the script in a second, but in here I have a body which on load I'm going to display result. I'm going to call a JavaScript function. I'm going to pass it the string CD catalog. Well, the reason for that is is I've named the XML CD catalog XML and I've named the XSL CD catalog XSL. So I can. I, I'm just showing that I can call this function with CD catalog and I'm going to have it pull both, I'm going to have it open both those files. And then I created a div here called example where I'm going to put the output. So the output you see in this HTML file here is the output that I've actually put into that div. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to call display result. So over here I've got this function called display result. Okay. First thing that I do is I create a variable called XML, which is now going to be equal to load XML doc. By the way, load XML doc is a JavaScript function. Okay, well, I'm sorry, load XML doc is a uh, function that I wrote. It's going to call a JavaScript function to do this, but it's going to call load, Java, uh, load XML doc, and that XML doc um, is going to get loaded into the variable XML and I'm also going to load another XML document because XSL is an XML language. It's written in XML. So now I have this, uh, I, now, so the XML is an XML variable and the XSL is an XSL variable. Well, let's go up to load XML doc. If I come over here to XML doc, you notice that I pass it the name. And really there's an if there. And the if there is simply put there because Internet Explorer handles loading XML differently than the other browsers and those other browsers being specifically Firefox, Opera, those other browsers. So if I'm using a, um, everything but in Internet Explorer, I do this by creating a variable called XHTTP, that's just the name of the variable, um, equal to a new XML HTTP request, which is going to say, hey, I'm going to open this up. And in the case of Internet Explorer, I do it through an ActiveX object. And the name of that type of ActiveX object is Microsoft.XMLHttp. Both objects actually behave very much the same. I open 
the file. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm opening either the file that's the CD object, uh, the CD catalog.xml or the CD catalog.xsl, depending on one that you're doing. Okay, and then I return the response HTML from that. So I'm basically sending back some HTML. So this is going to, I'm sorry, XML. This XML is going to contain the XML data. The XSL is going to contain the XML style sheet, which is also as XML. Now, we have two different ways to process this. Okay, if window.activex object, basically saying that there is an ActiveX object that has been instantiated, which means that it was Internet Explorer, okay, I'm going to do it through this function called transform node, and I'm going to pass it the X style sheet. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the XML file, and then I call XSL, okay, and then that is assigned to the variable EX. What it does, that does, is it simply transforms the XML into HTML, valid HTML, okay, and assigns that HTML to EX, which is a variable. And then in the document, I get the element ID by ID as example. That's the div that we created. Remember the good old div. And I set the inner HTML equal to EX. So that inner HTML is going to be the HTML that's the contents of this table. Okay. If, however, it is not Internet Explorer, Okay, document.implementation and document.implementation create document are both going to be true. Now I'm going to have to do it with what's an, an object called an XSLT processor, which is a valid object in JavaScript. So I'm going to create a variable called XSLT processor, and it's going to be of the type XSLT processor. Okay, I'm going to take that XSLT processor object and I'm going to import the style sheet, well the XML of the style sheet is in the variable XSL. So I'm going to import the style sheet into this processor. So now the processor contains the XSL, the style sheet. And the result document okay, that I have right here is going to take the XSLT processor using the function called transform to fragment. It's going to take the XML okay, and it's going to put it into the document. So it's going to basically and that's going to end up being the result document. And then on the document, the div, the uh, called example, it's going to now append child result document. And that append child will actually pull back okay, from the result document, which I created up here, is now going to be appended to the end of that. Now, do you have to understand exactly how every line of this code works? Well, if you're going to be doing a lot of work in XML, you're going to have to learn a lot more than just these functions in XML. These are all functions specifically designed to work with the document object model. But for the most part, this code generates, okay, takes an XML and an XSL, puts them together to create an output. So, you can use this specific set of code that I have here. You can modify it if you desire to do specific things, but you can use this code to essentially take any XML and any XSL and put them together. The real lifting of what you need to do, which is the ability to work with an XML format, which you do, by the way, you need to understand how XML works and, and, and the formatting of XML documents, and how the XSL okay, works, which you do also need to understand. If you can understand how those two pieces work, you've pretty much got what you need to be able to display this because this function that I had here works on any XML and any XSL that are designed to tie together. So it doesn't matter what XML and XSL you, have to, you want to put together. The only thing that you would have to do is realize in my specific example, the function name okay, was the same for CD catalog, for the XML file, and the XSL file. If you were going to use a different name, you would have to change this portion of the function right here so that it, you're loading them underneath different names. They still have to be able to work together. Okay, So this is some pretty good um, programming work to, to work with, but what it allows you to do now is take XML files, which are data, 
XSL files, which are visual representation of data, and be able to create nice output of XML data in an HTML page. And it can be embedded. So you can have embed multiple pieces of data into a page. There are places that you'll find will be incredibly useful to be able to do this. So hopefully you understood what I was going over everything here. Good programming. This is uh, some excellent material. And XML is one of my favorite things to work with. I do a lot of data work. And XML is a great data representation language. See you later.